Okay, welcome back everybody. So the last video we did, uh, we basically did a proxy model of our Hastings building. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna come back and do some more high res detail of this front facade here. Um, and basically build out our building um, with a little bit more information. So we're gonna go back to reference and we're gonna study that reference a bit more carefully. Um, and then from there, we're gonna start building components, right? And we're gonna really, explore the the power of control D um, and the power of control D is basically duplicating objects um, to make larger things and if you look at this building it's pretty much made up of a bunch of duplicated objects the bay window being a, a big component of this uh, building's facade um, and then all the architectural detail that we'll notice in the bottom pediment here um, and in the top cornice detail here so a lot of this stuff is is just repetition um, so we're going to use the power to repeat, the power to control D, to help us build out some high-res geometry um, to flesh out this building design. And we're going to start with, um, without the cartoony version, we're going to start building from this original proxy that we built. Um, but once we get those components, we can then stylize them to match um, these ones over in here. Um, so let's get started. So I'm just going to use the same scene. I'm going to turn off this layer, which is our, our proxy layer. Um, and then we're going to just start with a cube. All right, good old cube. And what we want to do um, in this session is model this window, right? So I got a couple of photos that I took on site, right? One from a little bit of an angle. We can see what that looks like. Um, and then another one from more front on. Now we've already gone through and extrapolated heights, proportions, etc. What I'm going to focus on right now is modeling this detail. All right, so let's get started. So let's start with this window ledge. All right, so we're gonna go back to Maya. Um, and actually, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit. Let's grab our proxy reference and let's grab one of these windows. And I'm just gonna take this window, unparent it from the rest, isolate it. And I'm also gonna remove it from the layer. So remove selected object from selected layers. I'm going to turn those layers off and I'm going to put this object back at the origin. So I'm going to model it so that it's basically the same shape and proportion of that proxy. So we're going to respect that proxy we made. Um, I'm just going to lift this above our ground plane. Okay, let's get started. So working from this, um, this was representative of this whole thing. So let's just break it down into this top component and this bottom component. And I think the way I'm going to approach it today, and there's many ways to approach it, I'm just going to duplicate this object and use one to denote the bottom. I'm just going to scale it up a little bit slightly so it's a little bit bigger. And I'm going to do the same to denote the top. Okay, so we know based on the proxy that we made, this is the relative height, or this is the height that we've designated for these bay windows. Now what I need to do is get the proportions right for the top and bottom detailing. So you'll notice, let's go to the front view here. You'll notice from the front view that they're actually quite similar, the top and the bottom. Let's see, let's look at this one. All right, so we have a top detail and a bottom team detail, which look more or less identical. We have these window sills, these ledge type elements here. The top one's missing it because it's got this weird roof detail, but here we've got a lot of trim and molding in here. So let's just start by equaling out these two. So let's do our Photoshop trick from uh, the other day. And let's just do a quick rough measurement by duplicating that little guy. Change it to white to make it read easier. And one of these, and that's roughly the same height, the windows, how many high, how many of these little molding details is that window high? One, two, roughly three. So I'm going to come in here. Now remember that pivot, the center point. We can move that by hitting insert on our keyboard. You'll notice the icon changed. 
now I can move this pivot point. And what I'm going to do here, you don't have to do this. I'm just going to make it a little bit easier for myself. I'm going to move it to the bottom. Hit insert again. I'm then going to scale it now. Now when I scale, the base of it's going to remain in the same spot. Do the same for the top one, but I'm going to work in the opposite direction. Move the pivot point to the top. And then when I scale this one, it's going to move that way. Well, technically speaking, these two objects should be the same height. So let's just use one. Here, yeah, that one probably looks a little better. Let's scale this guy out. Okay, and this guy needs to be about three high. So we're a little bit tall here. So I'm going to tweak this a little bit. Come back and scale this down just a touch. And control D. This one will be my measuring piece. And let's use Shift D. Whoops. Let's use Shift D to figure out the height here. Now remember, Shift D will duplicate an object and remember its transforms so that it'll continue to duplicate as long as you have Shift D and displace this original object the same distance every time. Um, so we're a little bit on the thick side. Let's one more Shift D. That's not bad, actually. That's pretty close. All right, so I'll do this. I'll take this guy go back over here. I'm just going to zero it out, put the X back to zero. Remember, we're building about the origin. Um, we've got our top and our bottom piece. It's roughly the same dimensions as that proportionally. Um, now what we want to do is work on this overhang. Now, looking from here, you can see in terms of where the shadows are lying, we've got a, quite a bit of overhang. So this part needs to be sticking out a lot more. So easiest way to do that is several ways we can do it. Let's just use the pick the face. Let's move this out a little larger to get that overhang. Actually, let's go back. So that ledge detail is going to overhang, but this one underneath might come back the same way. So let's do it this way instead. Let's grab this object. Okay. Let's duplicate it. Let's scale it to the thickness of that window ledge. Let's put this back here. All right. Not too bad. Let's scale this up just a touch so it overhangs a bit more. Let's scale it out this way. That looks pretty good. Now, the back end here is a little bit sloppy. Um, you can clean it up if you want. We're probably going to just end up shoving this into the main body of the building. but. I'm just going to line us up so it's all nice and flush. Uh, like I said, it doesn't really matter because we're going to put all this stuff into the main body of the building. So there's that first ledge detail. Let's go back in object mode here. Now, for the most part, I'm just going to use a cube to make most of this building. Um, and then I'm going to use some extrusion as well. So that'll be a, a different tool that will be Getting into, we introduced it in the last video, and we're going to continue to use it. Okay, so we've got the ledge, and then there's another piece of molding, and then another little piece of trim, and then we've got these box details on the bottom. So one, two. All right, so I'm not going to worry too much about getting the precise cross-section shape of that object. What I'm going to concern myself with is just getting the different layers um, in place. So I'm just going to mock with the scaling. Make it feel about right. And I want 
want to take this object here, go to face mode. I'm just going to grab. Uh, sometimes Maya likes to work in its own ways. There we go. I'm just going to line this up. All right, so. Uh, Okay, it's one, two, and then that bottom piece. Let's do one more trim detail here. And this one we're gonna make a little shorter and a little bit skinnier. I'm going to scale these two a little bit bigger. I don't think they need to be too much higher, but they need to be a little bit wider. All right, then. So that's that part. Now let's build these insets. Now I've got this piece here. I'm going to lower this top face. That UV window keeps grabbing my cursor. I'll scale this down a little bit. Oh, just a tiny bit. There we go. Okay. All right, that's better. Okay, let's make these boxy bits. So grab this face, control D. Um, oh, actually not control D, sorry. Grab this face. We're gonna extrude, so control E. And then we're gonna use the offset tool and we're gonna kind of bring that first box in. I'm gonna go back here and look at the detail that's been a little bit on the thick side. That's not bad. I'm going to take that one and I'm going to control E, so extrude again. This time I'm just going to translate it in. And we've got one, two. So let's build another one here. Control E. Use that offset tool. And then control E again. Gonna translate it in Z. One, two, I think I need one more. One, two, and then this one. Oh, that's good. And there we have it. Now we have our box detail on that window. Now we need to do the same for each side. So I'm gonna do it again. Control E. Use the offset. Now you can write the values of the offset down. Um, let's try that. And 0.5 is a bit big. Let's try 0.4. Show you again. 0.4. And let's control E again. Oh, wait. Ooh. E, move in Z, control E, offset point four, control E, Z again. I'll make that one a little smaller. And there we go. Okay. Let's do 
the same for this side. Pick our face. Control E to extrude. Offset. I'm going to keep it consistent there. Control E again. Whoops. Control E. Fine. Sometimes when I do Control E again, it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Let's see if it did it that time. Nope. There we go. Okay. Bottom box detail is done. All right, let's look at what the top looks like. So the top is more or less the same. Um, and then if we look at one of these ones further down, the top also has a bit of a trim. So you can read that as the bottom of this one or the top of this one. I'm going to read it as the top, and that way both pieces of geo um, will be identical, top and bottom. It should make our life a little bit easier. So let's go into object mode here. And let's do some grouping. So I'm going to group these three windowsill pieces together. I'll parent those. And I'm going to parent this to this bottom box. Uh, let's give this a name. So bay window. I'm going to call this the base. And then this other thing here, I'm going to call this the windowsill bay window sill okay and then i'm going to actually duplicate that guy and move it up to the top here i'm going to get rid of this that was our stand-in i'm going to go to the front view here get this lined up properly to the top of this object and then i'm going to take this original base geometry i'm just going to grab its top points and move it further down um, ah. Okay. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now this one here, let's see, something's not right there. So let's go back and look at this. Oh, there is a little piece of trim between the top. Oh, look at that. So we have all of this in here at the top of this window that we need to add in. Okay. Oh, I see what I missed. Let's see if I can just duplicate that piece, put it on the bottom here. I don't think that's going to work. Um, it'd be a fast way to fix, solve that problem, but I don't think that's the actual detail. So we have that, correct. And then we have some more trim molding and then the window begins. So, okay, let's keep that there. I'm gonna control D this part again. And I'm gonna use it to make that trim detail up in there. So again, working pretty broad. What I wanna do is first capture the scale and proportion of this thing. So that's obviously way too big. That feels about better. Go back to the reference. Let's go to the front view. And let's look at that more carefully. So there's our trim. And this is actually quite different on the bottom, but eh, we're going to ignore it. So that part there. So we're trying to capture. All right, let's go back in here. That's not bad. And then let's actually add in a window. So for this, we're just going to get a new cube. And I'm going to scale it up. About the scale here. So this is going to end up being my window frame. So I'm just going to get this 
to the right size first. Let's see if this feels about right. It's a little bit more squat than what we see in the reference. So I think this distance feels good, but the height doesn't feel good. So I think part of it is all this detail in here. I'll scale that one down a little bit. And scale this guy up a little bit more. That's been a little bit better. All right, that's pretty close. Like I said, right from the beginning, we're not making an exact replica of this building. We're going to use it as inspiration. Um, and we're going to make a cartoony stylized version of the building itself. So at this point, I'm going to capture all this molding detail. I think this stuff's quite important when you're building architecture. Um, I think all this molding detail is going to add to um, the design in a sense that it's going to take it from being this flat object to an object that has different surfaces and ledges. And then when you go and light this object in 3D, it's going to look way more interesting than if it was just an open, a cut open window. Um, all this molding just adds to the elegance of the building, the design and the detail, um, but also gives um, a lot of interest to the eye when looking at it. Even if you look at this building compared to a modern building, um, you'll notice how all those details catch light and shadow and really gives that building a sense of form and definition. So we're going to try and do the same because when you light a flat surface in 3D, it just looks horrible. Um, when it's articulated and it has lots of detail, it just takes it from being this plain computer object um, that's perfectly built to something that feels a little bit more naturalistic. Okay, so I got a problem with this thickness here. So I think I'm gonna scale this up a little bit more. That's not bad. And then I'm gonna be able to push this little guy back in a little bit more. Give us one a little bit more. All right. So there's our rough where our window's going to be. And then let's just go and lock in the ones on the sides too. All right, so we're going to rotate this object. I'm going to come to the top view. I'm going to go into wireframe. And I'm going to rotate this so it matches the angle of our side bay window. Now, if I go back to my reference from the three quarter photo, that window's pretty narrow and there's still quite a bit of molding between the edge and the window itself. And it's probably equal distance to how much space we've got here. So I'm gonna have to scale this guy in X to equalize that out. That looks a little bit better in terms of the proportions. Um, now in the reference, these windows are really close to the edge of the building. Um, so I think I can afford to be a little bit bigger. That's not bad. Let's go with that. Hey, it's pretty good. All right, let's model some detail of the window itself. So I'm just going to pull this out from here for now. And we're going to go model window. And I'm going to use the extrude tool to do this. So I'm going to pick the face, Control E, and I'm going to offset this guy. So it's roughly the thickness of that window frame. So they're pretty thin actually in the reference itself. So let's go with a number of 0 0.3. 0 0.3, let's try 0.3. And then we're going to extrude that again. And this time we're going to translate that locally in Z. And these windows are what's called a double hung window. Um, and all that means 
is these windows slide up and down. Mainly the bottom window slides up, the top window. Some buildings, they actually open and they slide as well. Um, here's a really great reference here. So you can see that this bottom sash is sliding up um, behind this top sash, which is usually fixed. Um, all right. So basically we need two of these. I'm gonna delete this face because we don't really need that face. That face is gonna be hidden. Um, and to save some geometry, we can just delete it. I'm gonna make this a little bit thinner. And then I need another one. Going to my front view. And what I'm gonna do, rather than scaling, I'm gonna move these vertices because I don't want the thickness of the window frame to change, right? If I scale it, it's gonna change the relationship of the border there. All right, I'm just gonna do a version where I scale it just as an example. So I could have scaled it, but what would end up happening? See that top line up there? See how narrow it is now? That's because the geometry is scaling about the center point. I wanted that relationship, the thickness there to be the same. So the best way to do it was to tag the vertices and to actually translate them. Okay, now the way this window was built was this sash is in front of the lower one. So technically speaking, whoops, that's not what I wanted. <clears throat> Technically speaking, this should be lower. Okay. Let's label these. I'm just going to call them window sash. And remember, Maya does not like spaces and names. So if you're going to put a space, use an underscore. OK, so now I'm going to lose this window altogether. I think it actually needs to be thinner. Uh, because now I'm just shoving it into this geometry. So the best thing to do is for us to actually cut a hole. So let's cut a hole in here. So we have our geometry. I'm just going to go to wireframe here and maybe go to the front view. I'm going to add in an edge loop. So we go to mesh tools, insert edge loop. And there's edge loop number one. And insert a second edge loop, edge loop number two. And I'm also going to insert an edge loop actually up here and another one down here. So what I'm doing is basically adding edge loops to this piece of geometry, okay, so that we can basically choose. Let me quit out of edge loop tool. We can basically choose this face, okay, and I'm going to highlight it and then hit delete, and it's gonna delete that face. And then what I'm gonna have is, oops, I'm still in the edge loop tool for some reason. Back to object mode. We have a hole. We have a hole. We can insert that window frame into that hole. Actually, let's go back. Let's, 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 let's do that again, folks. Instead of deleting it, and I'm going to move our windows out of the way first. Let's control E again. So we're going to extrude. And this way we'll get these side pieces, and then we'll delete that face. I'm just going to move this back. Oh, that feels better. Look at that. We got a window. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, now we're going to actually duplicate this window. 
and add it to our side. All right, let's see if this works. Oh yeah. I'm just gonna pick these vertices and move them in. All right, so we have our side window. And let's do the same thing for the side that we did for the front. And let's cut a hole in here. So we're going to select this object. And we're going to go to Mesh Tool. I'm going to insert an edge loop. And we're going to insert two of them. Now we're going to get one on the other side for free because it's an edge loop. It's looping the whole object. I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard to quit out of that tool. OK, so let's just take this guy out of here for a second. I don't think we're going to need him, actually. And then let's grab this face, Control E. And we're going to push that back in so we have that thickness of that wall represented. We don't have to delete this, but I'm going to delete this. We're going to do the same over here, Control E. And I'm going to delete that face as well. And we're going to pick this. Oops. I'm going to pick this window. And we're going to rotate it into place. Now, my center point on this window is looking kind of weird. Um, because I moved those vertices. I can fix that. Um, but first, I'm just going to get this in the right angle. And that looks pretty good. Might be a bit big for our opening. Delete this piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this side up, go into wireframe. I'm going to go back to vertice mode on these objects. Oh boy. All right. Go back into five so we can see what we're doing. I'm just going to move that out. Not bad. All right, now we have two windows. And for the third set, I'm just going to control D this sucker. And I'm going to look at its translation and rotation. So we want the opposite of that angle. Oh boy, this is where math comes in. And then I want it to be, I'm just going to eyeball it. Maybe easier. There we go. Now we have a bay window component number one complete. Um, let's save this out. So let's go file. And we're going to save it. And I'm going to pause it right there for now. And then we're going to come back and pick up on this tutorial. And we're going to do, let's see what we're going to do next. We're going to build this cornice detail next. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good luck. Model fast, model fun. Uh, don't be afraid. You're not going to break anything. And we'll see you next time. Ciao.